everything that Jason has done since I've known you for like 10 plus years has kind of led up to this moment. Before Redpoint was GitHub, before GitHub was Heroku, before Heroku was Canonical, and developers and platforms and systems for the last 15 years. I'm Erica Brescia, and I'm here with my partner, Jacob Efron, and we have a very special episode of Term Sheet Teardown. We're here with our very own Jason Warner. We've been incubating a company with him. I will let you take it away, Jason. Tell us about Poolside. The easiest way to describe it is it's a frontier AI and infrastructure company focused on developer software and code. We're going after narrow AGI through code and software. Getting to that approach via software and code is a really interesting path. It'll lead to reasoning really quickly. Jason, and obviously, you know, we've been jamming on a lot of this AI stuff. And I'm curious, when did you get the vision and kind of the belief here that you, you know, to, to kind of build Poolside? Well, about a year ago, when everyone started playing with GPT-4, we started to see a bunch of different things that were going to become possible really quickly, really concretely. It wasn't until about that time that we started to really put two and two together about what was the world going to look like in 10 years. How I've always approached this is how do I help the makers and how do I help developers? About six months ago, I've been working with a couple of different folks, a bunch of my CTO friends, and we just started writing the scripts across various systems. Right around that time, you started to realize that, okay, this is going to be possible to enable developers in a way that wasn't conceivable before in this human-led AI-assisted world, which would quickly give way if we all did our jobs correctly to this AI first human assistant world. When you take this and like project forward, what does the role of a software developer look like in five years? Just like all of software development has changed over the last 40 years, software developers themselves still need to exist, but the role changes. Their relationship with X or Y or Z will change. And X might be source code, or Y might be all the build pipelines, or Z might be how much they have to dig into something that's happening in production by themselves and alone. I'm not one of those that believes that software developers are gonna go away. But what I do believe is that our relationship to the job will go away. Not the craft, not the hobby, not the intellect. And so I think ultimately it's going to be about the fact that you're still trying to solve a problem. AI is a tool that's available to you. First, it's going to assist you and eventually it's gonna do a lot of the mundane stuff for you, but ultimately it's a tool. And if you think of it as anything other than a tool, you're not gonna be scared of it. At GitHub, we used to talk about the fact that there was this huge global shortage of developers. What Poolside can do is make developers who are building just so much more productive. We don't write assembler the way we used to write assembler. Even very popular frameworks like Rails and Node and uh, Django and stuff are supposed to be able to take away some of that mundane effort to get people to focus back on the things that matter. So ultimately, at the end of the day, I think that's going to be it. We're, we're creating an exoskeleton or, or an Iron Man suit for folks as well. And we're just trying to give them the superpowers there and the, and the super suit. But at the end of the day, just like you know, in the comics, Tony Stark is still Iron Man. He's still the superhero. I think one of the things we've talked about a bunch is just kind of expanding access to what can be built. And I'd love to hear you just riff on that a little bit. I think there's a bunch of things that you know I, I can't even really conceive because I do think that as you build these things, there's an obvious next step, like a brick after a brick after a brick. And as, with enough of those, you'll enter this event horizon where we can't really conceive about what might come next. For me, that's all about the human ingenuity and the creativity and the, those things that will be unleashed when everybody will be able to express a lot of their ideas or thoughts into whatever it is, whether it's a video game or a new, a new Linux kernel or an XYZ subsystem. There's, there's, those things become unbounded. Take a step back and all the things that stop any one of us from expressing ourselves, whether it's we lack the skill, the time, the energy, or the effort, bring those in and say, okay, so in a short amount of time, we can bring you at least to a MVP level or a POC level or whatnot, and allow those iterations to happen.